Hi everyone, here we are again for Ways of the World, a brief global history with sources. As we continue our study of milestones of the past century, war and revolution, with democracy denied, the authoritarian alternative. So let's start with European fascism. A new political ideology known as fascism became important in much of Europe during the period 1919 to 1945. It was based on uh, being intensely nationalistic, uh, the exalted action over reflection. Uh, they looked to charismatic leadership uh, against individualism, liberalism, feminism, parliamentary democracy, and communism. Uh, fascists were determined to overthrow existing regimes, and they were very conservative and reactionary, and they celebrated traditional values. Fascism appealed to dissatisfied people in all social classes. Fascist movements grew thanks to the devastation of World War I and appeared in many Western European lands, became important in Austria, Hungary, Romania, and Spain, and they achieved major power in Italy and Germany. Fascism first developed in Italy. Uh, social tensions were exacerbated by economic crisis. Uh, Benito Mussolini, 1883 to 1945, put together a private army, army, the Black Shirts, to use violence as a political tool. Mussolini's movement took the ancient Roman fascists as a symbol, and once in power, Mussolini built state power. Uh, Mussolini embraced the Catholic culture. Women were portrayed in highly traditional domestic terms, and Ethiopia was invaded as their first step in a quote-unquote new Roman Empire. All right, Hitler and the Nazis. So German fascism was more important than that of Italy. It took shape as the Nazi party under Adolf Hitler, 1889 to 1945. There are many similarities to Italian fascism. It grew out of the collapse of the German imperial state after World War I, uh, developed a new government, the Weimar Republic, who had negotiated the peace after the World War I. Uh, traditional, traditional elites were disgraced. Um, there's a creation of a myth that Germany had not really lost the war, but had been betrayed by civilians like socialists, communists, and Jews. In the 1920s, uh, vigilante groups assassinated hundreds of supporters of the Weimar government. Uh, widespread economic suffering. There's massive inflation in 1923. Uh, and then, of course, the Great Depression at the end of the decade. Um, inflation was so terrible in Germany in the 1920s, um, and the economic crisis was so terrible. They were burning money in the winter to stay warm. Everyone wanted decisive government action, and thus the National Socialist Party, or the Nazi Party, won uh, with growing public support. The Nazis had only 2%, 2.6% uh, of the vote in 1928, but by 30, or excuse me, 1932, they had 37%. Uh, Hitler became chancellor, and as chancellor, he suppressed all other political parties. He arrested opponents, censored the press, and assumed pol uh, police power. He successfully brought Germany out of the Depression and by the 1930s had majority support. He invoked rural and traditional values. He used the Jews as the ultimate scapegoat for the ills of society. Um, thus the emphasis on a racial revolution and Jews were increasingly excluded from public life. He was deeply anti-feminist. Little women, um, or excuse me, limited women largely to the home. I promoted the cult of motherhood and state-sponsored system of brothels. And there's even an emphasis on augmenting a number of Aryan Germans. The rise of Nazism represents a moral collapse within the West and a highly selective use of earlier strands of European culture, and it made use of modern science as well. All right, the faces of European fascism. So Benito Mussolini on the left and Adolf Hitler on the right came to symbolize fascism in Europe in the several decades between the two world wars. In this photograph from September 1937, they are reviewing German troops, reviewing German troops in Munich under, or excuse me, during Mussolini's visit to Germany, a trip that deepened the growing relationship between their two countries. So in what way do the camera angle and composition of the photograph complement fascist ideology? Well, the men are on a platform that rises above the crowd. The camera is angled so that the viewer looks up to Mussolini and Hitler. And they are dressed in military uniforms and look out over the crowd with a commanding presence. 
All right, the ideal Nazi family. So this painting by Wolfgang Wierdeich, the uh, prominent Nazi artist, portrays a highly romanticized Nazi image of an ideal Aryan family. They have four children. Most are dressed in plain peasant-style clothing. The mother wears her hair in a bun and does not use makeup. They live in a rural agricultural setting, and the boy is wearing a Hitler youth uniform. Uh, and all of them are blonde with athletic bodies and ruddy complexions. So what specific aspects of German nationalism are romanticized in this painting? What does it imply about Germany's diverse society? Well, this painting romanticizes a German nationalism that is peasant and family-based, featuring athletic um, Caucasian people with blonde hair that is evidenced by the eldest son's Hitler youth uniform, do their part to support the state. It delegitimizes ethnic and racial diversity within Germany. All right, Japanese authoritarianism. So like Japan, um, this is also a newcomer to quote-unquote great power status, like Germany and Italy, and they moved to an authoritarian government and territorial expansion. But there are important differences. Japan played only a minimal role in World War I, and at Versailles, Japan was an equal participant on the, on the winning side. In the 1920s, Japan was apparently moving toward democracy, is an expansion of education, a creation of an urban consumer society, greater individual freedoms, including women, and lower class movements that worked for greater equality. There are tensions of modernization and industrialization that emerged. Uh, there's the quote unquote rice riot of 1918, a union membership tripled in the 1920s, tenant, unit, tenant union, uh, unions multiplied in the countryside, and women's movements demanded suffrage and uh, the end of legalized prostitution. Socialist and communist political parties also took shape within Japan. But the elite reacted with alarm. Uh, the political activists were arrested, a uh, few were even killed. And the Great Depression hit Japan particularly hard. Uh, it led many to doubt that parliamentary democracy and capitalism could help resolve, quote unquote, the national emergency. And thus the development of radical nationalism and the revolutionary right. And so we see a shift in uh, Japanese public life in the 1930s. Major government posts went to prominent bureaucrats or military figures, not to party leaders. The military became more dominant. Free expression was increasingly limited. The government adopted many themes from the revolutionary right, and major public works spending pulled Japan out of the Depression rapidly. There's also increasing government oversight of economic matters, and thus Japan was less oppressive than Germany or Italy. All right, the growth of Japanese militarism. So this poster celebrating the Japanese Navy was created by the National Defense Women's Association in 1938. It reflects the increasing role of the military in Japanese national life and seeks to encourage female support for it. So what does the poster above suggest about women's attitudes on Japanese militarism? This poster suggests that Japanese women should patriotically support Japanese militarization. And that concludes our study of Democracy Denied, the Authoritarian Alternative. I will see you guys next time.